In this video we'll talk about Stormgate multiplayer. Is it good? Is it balanced? And is it ready to be a new esports RTS? And most importantly, what faction should you choose? Let's explore the factions and current state of affairs in this game. First of all, if you are new to this game, in a way Stormgate vs seems to be a much more complicated game than StarCraft 2 was. You have two types of resources, Luminite and Ethereum, which you spend to train an army and construct new buildings. This is pretty similar to StarCraft 2. However, there are also two other macro features that make this game more interesting. Each race also has a top panel with six different abilities that can change the battlefield. This feature was present in some other RTS games such as Camelot and Conqueror, and in Stormgate it plays a crucial role in your battle planning. For example, as Wingard you can grant a shield to your unit that can absorb up to 1000 HP, which is a huge deal if your opponent doesn't micro well. Infernos can instantly drop a defensive structure, and Celestials can overcharge their buildings to protect themselves against early game rushes. And there are plenty of different examples. In addition to that, each map has lots of creep camps. There are Speed, Vision, Health, Energy, Luminite, Ethereum, and even Siege creep camps. As you can guess from the names, they all serve a different purpose. Killing certain creeps not only grants you a permanent passive bonus, but you also get a bit of resources for every creep you kill. This way, Stormgate heavily incentivizes players to control the map and be always present. Being too passive might make you significantly weaker in the long run. Sometimes creep camps can even fight back against you and ruin your whole army. After the recent balance patch, they also give you even more resources and it impacts the gameplay quite a lot. As do the maps, currently there are 7 maps but they change the gameplay drastically. From the amount of creep camps to simply layout, size, airspace and trees that you can cut to clear up up for yourself. Maps really matter in this game and you can't just ignore them and play the same build order on every single one of them. Moreover, it's possible to make build orders specifically for each map. This is somewhat similar to gold bases in StarCraft 2, but there is a lot more details to it. Fights also take a bit more time compared to StarCraft 2. I would say this is somewhere in between StarCraft 2 and Worker 3. In early and mid game it usually takes some time to kill units and workers, and thus it's much harder to lose something in a blink of an eye, as it often happens in StarCraft 2. However, this is not true for late game, where powerful abilities and units come into play. Now let's get to races, we currently have 3. Human Vanguard, Infernal Host and Celestials. Let's start with Human Vanguard, a user-friendly faction for those who want to learn the game. Despite that it seems somewhat familiar, it's probably the hardest race that is currently in the game. Much like Terrans in StarCraft 2, Vanguard relies heavily on microcontrol, kiting, splitting, dropping and getting map control as well. This race is best suited for those who enjoys microing a lot and it takes quite a lot of APM to play on the highest level. There are also many references to StarCraft 2 that are captured by this race. We had a big list in our previous video that you can check out. So if you enjoy Terran, you'll most likely have a lot of fun playing Vanguard in Stormgate. However, compared to the Terran race, Vanguard is somewhat easier in the late game because you have veterancy mechanic. Basically, each unit has 3 levels that gain some HP and attack bonus as well as some unit specific buffs such as armor or weapon range. This ultimately means that if you are playing carefully and survive in the late game, you might amass an almost unbeatable army of veterans, and on top of that, you have carriers that shoot like battle cruisers and also have a lot of small bombers. The main drawback for this faction is that it needs a lot of micro control, APM and multitasking. Next we have Infernal Host, which is somewhat similar to the Zerg race in how you can play it. This race relies mostly on a mass swarm of units, with some key casters that significantly buff your army. The goal for this race is to expand constantly and apply a lot of pressure on your opponent by doing drops or just seizing the map and constantly harassing different bases. It can also be played rather passively and defensively, much like it looked in ZVT matchup in StarCraft 2. This is also the easiest macro and micro race, and when you learn how to play it, you'll feel it's easier to control. However, your army is also going to be somewhat worse in quality most of the time, and unless you are filthy rich and can afford a lot of high quality casters and tanky units, you'll have to fight on multiple fronts. This is also the race that suffers quite a bit in the late game. 
Another cool detail for this race is that it allows for a lot of different playstyles. While it's easier to just build more units and aim move into your opponent, you can try building high quality armies with lots of casters, set poisonous traps or even build an expensive dragon and use it as a harass tool, or even in direct fights. This race is not limited to only one swarmy playstyle. The last race we have is Celestials and this is the most complicated, yet easy race to play. Currently, it dominates the ladder because of some slightly overpowered units, which were however just nerfed by the latest patch. It does resemble Protoss Race a bit since you need to build power nodes to gain energy, which improves your unit's fighting capabilities and unlocks the abilities from the top panel. The Sim City for this race is also unique. Your main building can fly and produce buildings and units on the go. You only need 4 workers for each resource base and they also fly, and you can build mini morph cores that transform into buildings, and they also shoot like a mothership core from StarCraft 2. The race also has a starting 300 supply, and the idea behind the gameplay is that you have to constantly roam the map, build everywhere, and be very unpredictable, and also expand and get more and more resources. The units for this race are so far quite powerful, but they rely a lot on energy, and they need to return back to base to restore it. Without energy, even the main basic unit, Argent, has much lower attack and becomes less efficient. If you take a look at their cost efficiency in general, the race is slightly worse to Vanguard, but it compensates for that with quick and effortless economy building and the ability to build almost anywhere. While it seems like a hard race, in reality it's incredibly powerful, at least for now, providing you have enough APM and multitasking to expand and utilize its fullest potential. As for the balance, it's very early to say and there'll be many hotfixes soon, and at the moment of course Celestials dominate the ladder, but that may change with the patch that just dropped. Infernos, they are racing just slightly behind the Celestials, and Vanguard is currently struggling a little bit. But things will certainly change soon, so pick your race based on how you enjoy playing. Are there any problems with current versus? Well, yes, there are some, and they mostly derive from other aspects of the game. The core gameplay seems to be really great, but there are still some stuff to be improved. For example, it's still difficult to distinguish units in the fights, especially for spectators and viewers, and sometimes even for the players themselves. Also, there are many maps with two narrow choke points, and it feels a bit weird in the late game. It's really hard to engage on many maps due to how narrow the paths are. And this creates weird pathing for units, and just it's overall difficult for certain races like Infernal Host to win in the late game. To sum up, with a plethora of different mechanics from different RTS games, as well as three completely unique races, this game has an incredible foundation to be a great competitive esports game. We'll soon see how the first tournaments go in August, and that's it for today, guys. What race will you pick in Stormgate? Subscribe for more StarCraft 2 and Stormgate content. Have a nice day, and see you next time.